So before I had a chance to finish editing this current video, um, a video had popped up on my recommended list from the Paul Harrell channel, and it's entitled, I'm Dead. Um, rest in peace, Paul Harrell. Thank you for sharing your vast knowledge regarding guns and shooting, different calibers and things like that. It's a sad thing when a human being that possesses all this knowledge does finally pass away and move on. I hope you do find what you're looking for as you're resting in peace, like many of us are going to find what we're looking for also. Um, I do recommend you friends go over to his channel and watch his final video that he himself has done because he makes an interesting comment about one fella in particular and I've, I've seen the videos that Paul Harrell has done in response to this particular individual and um, I'm familiar with that um, concept of somebody hijacking your content. Uh, not so much on this channel but my wife and I we have another channel and we see the same thing happening to us. It's actually one thing to reference somebody's channel um, as to where you've got your source of information and it's a completely different matter when you take someone's content and make it and present it as if it's your own. So, you know, Paul, thank you so much for being brave enough to stand up and point out when people do that and have done that to your channel. Um, I'm very familiar with that happening. So anyhow, uh, friends, please take a moment or two to go over there. Um, give your condolences in the comment section. And uh, please bear in mind and listen to what he says about hijacking somebody's content. So on with the current video. Early morning archery for us. <laughs> Take the challenge with the sun in the eyes. Interesting. Well, I guess that battery's dead. Recording. There's Mike doing what he does. This gentleman right here shot this entire archery course with that bailing, barely hanging on by a thread feather. So let's see if that feather will stay on by the time we get to the last bale here. That's it. <laughs> hey, what was that? Bail. That's what happens when you shoot with a loose feather. <laughs> um, uh, boy, that's going to make some good filling material. <laughs> Tails of the trail. Yeah.
All right, so here's the last shot with that feather. At the smallest target. At the smallest target, correct. It does like that left side. <laughs> I get to get a picture of that feather just <laughs> hanging straight down. There and there it is, go. straight down. It takes a specific hold oh, of the charger. Type thing? Okay. Yeah, I guess you could charge it with the... Uh, cord here. Yeah. Oh, oh, that one hurt. Now imagine what that'd have been like if we'd been in the trees. Oh yeah, we'd be searching for five minutes. Yeah. There you nice. go. Well, friends, while waiting for the sun to go down, I drank all my whiskey. <laughs> so you'll be drinking alone. <laughs> Thanks for clicking on this video and joining in on this conversation. And I want to welcome all the new subscribers. I've been very um, mildly surprised as to how many new subscribers I've gotten over in, even in the past week. So thank you for joining and I welcome everybody. Um, I just kind of want to get into this real quick. I want to address a commenter that has left a couple comments on a couple of my videos um, suggesting that I get a modern day gun. <laughs> get, a, get a cartridge gun. And yes, I know, I got to tell you guys, my first love is black powder, cap and ball revolvers and or the long guns. That is my first love. And as you can tell, I've already replaced the front sight from that brass uh, blade that I installed in here. It didn't, I couldn't get it to um, hit the point of impact, and now she does. Okay, but just because cap and ball revolvers and black powder guns are my first love, even making my own homemade black powder, um, to assume that somebody like myself doesn't have any modern day guns you would be absolutely wrong this is a tristar t120 nine millimeter it's um some people call it a clone of a cz 75 and it does mirror a cz 75 real close it handles real good and i'm quite adept at hitting my target with it um, this is actually my go-to gun. I just want to play around, shoot cheap ammunition. I have a GSG 1911. I've already kind of showed this once years ago, um, but I, I haven't shot any of these guns on camera, camera just simply because YouTube um, doesn't like this kind of stuff, and I'm not willing to stick a stick in a hornet's nest right now and stir it up because over the years I've seen YouTube content creators complain about YouTube taking down their videos and I understand um, that even Mike Bellevue right now he's going through the same issue with YouTube taking down some of his content to where he shows making you know a modification on one of the guns or something like that so I'm just trying to be a little cautious um, you know, in using any of my modern day guns um, on this channel, um, you scroll back and there's a video up on this channel right now of my wife shooting her Bursa Thunder 380 plus. I have a Bursa Thunder 380 plus and I've got a couple other smaller, um, more easily concealed firearms. But when I talk about, you know, having to go to my cap and ball revolver, um, it's absolutely a last resort and I have some of these placed um, so that if I can't get to 
this real quick, but I can get to this quicker. This is what I'm going to grab. And guarantee you, an intruder isn't going to give a thought about this being underpowered. He's not going to give a thought to this. Well, does he have a felt wad between the ball and the powder charge? Because if he took out the felt wad, he can get five more grains in there. I don't subscribe, friends, to those type of comments. I just don't because I've got too many years experience with black powder. I mean, hell, for the benefit of those that are just joining this channel, um, you scroll back and I've even mentioned as a filler material from time to time that I built my first cap and ball revolver when I was 18 years old. It was a 58 Remington. I had to get rid of that gun due to some um, circumstances in life. And I then, when I could afford it, I bought a second cap and ball revolver, Remington kit, and I built that. Subsequently, things in life changed and I had to get rid of that. Um, then I got a 1860 Army kit and I built that. So even within those three kits, I learned how to time a revolver. Okay. Now, just to add to the context, if a bad guy comes into my house, I can very easily go to my 12 gauge and or I could go to my 44 Magnum and or I could go to my 44 Special and or I could go to my 380 and or in extreme cases I could go to my 3030. I don't need to invest in any more guns. If I do any more investing, it'll be with cap and ball revolvers or even a long gun. But I'm not the type of guy that follows the crowd. I know right now on YouTube, there's a whole lot of buck skinners, a whole lot of black powder shoot shooters, all investing into the Kibler Woods Runner. I'm not that type of guy to follow the crowd. I just don't. <laughs> I just don't. I don't see the need for it because what I have right now that brings me joy and pleasure, I already have. I already have. So, you know, that's kind of where I'm coming from, friends. If you're going to leave comments that lend themselves to such things as invest in a modern day gun, I'm going to react those because to me they're just nonsense because I have some stuff on this channel which has been in existence for about 10 years now okay and for a YouTube channel to be in existence for 10 years in my opinion is quite an accomplishment although I have to admit I haven't really done anything with it um, as much as I have been doing in the past several years. And really, the only reason why I'm doing this now is because my wife has encouraged me to do it. When I started making black powder, she says, you know, you really should start putting that up on your Lane Beaver channel. Thus, I'm doing it. And in time, I fully expect YouTube to start cracking down on channels such as this that are showing... Um, going just beyond the basics of making black powder. That's my feelings about it. I think YouTube eventually is going to crack down on, on content like this too because somebody's going to be pushing the issue. But until then, um, I just kind of want to you know help people learn or share what I've learned with you over the years. And like I said, I've, I've, I've heard it all over the years. You know, like the opening scene with the archery. Wow, you must be a really good archer. Well, I'm not the best, and I'm not the worst, and when I have to, I can hold my own against anybody. It's the same thing with knife and hawk. I'm not the best hawk and knife thrower. I'm not the worst, but when I have to, I can hold my own against anybody. And this is what I tell people when it comes to shooting. The gun don't miss. 
I do. And I think that that's something that a lot of gun shooters should keep in mind because over the years in the Mount Man Rendezvous, I've heard every excuse under the sun as to why somebody can't hit a target. Every excuse imaginable. It ain't the gun. It's the guy pulling the trigger. So anyhow, friends, that kind of gives you a, an overall view of my thought processes regarding this whole black powder thing. And, um, you know, I, I welcome your comments, but leave them in the form of questions because when you get dogmatic and make a statement such as, you need to invest, well, I'm going to show you just how wrong you are. So thanks for watching, and everybody enjoy the rest of the evening. <laughs> Bye.